Hey everybody, Mike here with everythingaboutconcrete.com. In today's video, I'm going to show you how we form, how we pour, and how we finish a concrete patio to the entrance of this house. So what we're doing right now is we're going to put the forms up. I'm establishing the top of the concrete patio grade, and it's going to be it's going to be one step up into the house. So I measure down seven inches from the entrance of that doorway and I got my laser set up, my self-leveling laser and I'm gonna now I'm gonna mark the rest of the grade around the outside of that patio so we have something to go by when we set the forms up. So I'm gonna set the receiver on the grade stick right even with the you know the laser beam coming out of that laser and then that's gonna allow me to mark my level across the back of that. So what we're going to end up doing here is we're going to we're going to screw a 2x4 on to the outside of that foundation and then we're going to screw our form onto that 2x4 and that's going to allow the patio when we pour it to overhang the foundation by an inch and a half so what Luke's doing right now is he's smoothing out the seams so we can screw that 2x4 on nice and easily the girls are snapping a chalk line around there and that's the top of our patio. And now we're gonna we're gonna screw those two by fours on. I'm using what I use for that is I use a Bosch hammer drill. So I drill a pilot hole and then we use a tap con screw. It's kind of a lag bolt, and we tap con those two by fours right to the foundation. We screw them right in there, they're nice and tight. And now that, that that's two things for us. It holds the two by four really tight so it won't move, it won't come off. And it's also easy to strip that way because we're just we're just using a lag bolt. So that DeWalt battery drill will will screw that right on, then it'll take it right back off again, nice and easy. So as you can see, we're screwing those two bys on. Top of the two bys right flush with the top of the concrete wall. All the way around the outside of that thing. And then we'll screw our 2x12 two by, two by form to that. This patio is about 10 inches thick over the dirt. It's about 8 inches thick over the top of that wall. It's plenty thick enough. That Bosch hammer drill, that works really good. I'll have a link in the description down there, guys, if you guys want to check that out. We use that thing all the time for lag, lag and forms on like this. And those tapcon screws work really well too. I don't know if you guys, if you guys don't use those, I'd highly recommend using those too. And you can see we got the last form lag screwed to the wall, and now we're going to screw our upright form to that, and that's what we're going to pour the concrete inside of. And we're just attaching that to the two by that two by four with these two and a half inch deck screws so we'll put them about every two feet then that form will be nice and secure we'll end up putting some braces on it before we pour but it's going to be good and tight and secure just by using those screws it goes up pretty easy as you can see you know you got your laser there to set your grade with you got somebody holding the board then one guy screwing and the forms go up pretty fast. That laser is the key. I mean, without that laser, this would take a lot longer. It would take two people to shoot a grade with this with a transit. And, you know, if you're just using a level, you could get by with a level, but that laser makes sure your grades are perfect. The patio slab slopes away from the house just a little bit, about an inch. So using the laser makes it real easy to set that slope in it, too. So we're getting ready to pour. It's really hot here today. It's, I think it was like 85 right here in the sun. So I just dampened the dirt a little bit so it wouldn't suck all the moisture out of the concrete. We bent those uprights. You see those rebar uprights the foundation guys put in. Uh, we don't do the foundations. We just do the flat work. So the, the foundation guys put those rebars in. We bent them over into the slab. The general contractor, they didn't want any rebar or wire mesh in this. I mean, it's... It's 10 inches thick, it doesn't really need it. We have the fiber mesh in there, and we're using a 4,000 PSI concrete mix, so 
The concrete's pr plenty strong enough. It's not going to go anywhere. You can see that red line I got on that on that uh, black that black ISO strip there up against the wall. It's it's ten inches thick right there. So we'll get all the concrete poured in here. This thing is about I think it was about six feet by by twenty six. Probably pouring the concrete. You know, we're, we're keeping it pretty stiff because of the slope. We don't want to pour the concrete too wet in here. Then it's just going to sag as I straight edge it, make it all harder to finish. Get all that concrete poured in there. We'll just leave a little bit low on that, that back edge in case I'm high up there. Now we're vibrating the edges to make sure the edges are going to be really smooth when we strip the forms. That pencil vibrator, you know, the DeWalt pencil vibrator, if, you know, if you've watched some of my other videos, you might have seen that before, but if you haven't, that, th that thing's a must-have for a concrete guy. You know, you don't have to pound the edges with a hammer. You don't have to tap them. That thing, that thing makes them perfectly smooth when you strip the form, so it's, it's well worth the money. That's down there in the description also. So if this is your first time watching me, guys, my name is Mike Day. I own Day's Concrete Floors. We specialize in all kinds of flat work, you know, floors, slabs, pool decks, patios, sidewalks. We do concrete repair. We even do a lot of epoxy floors. So if you like that kind of stuff, go ahead down there and hit subscribe now. Hit the little bell notification too. I put out a couple videos a week. So you'll be able to see all the, all the upcoming videos that come out. All right, so we got this thing almost poured, straight edged. The only thing I'll have left to do is just get it bull floated, then then mag it out, and then uh, and it's not going to take long before this is ready to start finishing. We're going to cut some grooves in this, and we're going to put a broom finish on it and edge around the form. So we're going to give it like a picture frame broom finish kind of look. If you got if you guys have never done that, you'll be able to see it right here. I've got some other videos I've done too about that. It's a pretty common finish to put on a patio like this if we're not doing a broom finish we're usually doing a stamp concrete type finish see I'm putting that string on to check that board make sure that stayed nice and straight you can see I got a couple I got a couple braces up against the form there just to keep it straight it's a lot of pressure being that thick now I'll just get that thing bow floated Bring up some cream, make it easier to finish, smooth out the rocks. Bull floating is pretty easy. You just got to, you know, make sure that front edge is tipped up when you push it out. Make sure the back edge is tipped up when you pull it back and let the tool do the work. Now, because it's so hot out, you know, I'm making sure my edges are all mag nice and smooth. I just don't want to leave it and come back. And have to try to mag it when it's when it's a lot firmer. Like I said, it's really hot here today in this corner. The sun's beating right on this thing. And it's not going to take long for this to dry today. I'm using kind of like a Darby type mag. It's a little bit longer than a regular mag. Uh, it just makes it just makes it faster, that's all. So we got this thing all magged out. Now what we're doing is we're laying out for the grooves. And I'm cutting in the grooves right here with this with this laser groover cutter. This thing's this thing's the way to cut grooves in. You can cut them in early with this thing. It doesn't sink down in the concrete. It gets the grooves nice and straight. It just keeps you ahead of the game when it comes to concrete, and that's the key to finishing is you want to stay ahead of the concrete. You don't want the concrete to start drying on you too fast. I'll have a link for one of these. If you guys have never used one of these, it's worth trying. This is fairly new to us. I saw this on somebody else using this on YouTube, so I got one. And same with this thing, this funny float. This is the same as mag floating it, basically, except it just gives you a little more reach. You can put a handle on it and you could reach out. You could put multiple handles on it really and reach out as far as you needed to, but I didn't have to reach out too far on this one. 
So I waited, I waited for any bleed water to dry up, and now I can get this surface magged out and get it nice and smooth and get it ready to start finishing. I like to mag it out at least once, sometimes twice, before I pull a broom across it. It just leaves for a nice, nice, tight, good-looking broom finish. I don't like my broom finishes too rough, especially on an entryway like this. Abby's getting the edges all edged. We're going to leave that edger mark, that nice rounded finished tool mark with the edger. I'm magging out around those groove marks I make to make sure they're nice and flat and level. Tia's doing the edger there too. Girls do a good job finishing. This is their first summer. They're both in college. But they're picking up the finishing part pretty quick. You can see I'm using one mag to lean on, then I'm using that other mag to reach out and get up against that wall to make sure that wall is all the edges are filled in with cream and everything looks nice and smooth up against the wall. And then I'm magging out my marks on my way back and I just set over and do it again. We haven't really had much time to stop since we finished pouring this thing. We just you know we cleaned up the tools then we went right back into start and finishing. That's how fast this thing was drying today. Now I'm going to reach in there from the other side, make sure everything looks good from that side. As a finisher, you, know, you, got, you do what you got to do to get it finished. If you got to lean down through a window like that, you lean through a window. It's whatever you can do. Now I'm touching up that groove with a hand groover, making sure the groove looks really good before we broom it. Because after you broom it, there's, there's, you know, there's no real way to, good way to touch it up without messing up the broom marks and redoing it. So we like to make sure the grooves are perfect, the edges look all real nice, and the surface is magged out real nice before we start brooming anything. I don't leave any little rock holes or pin holes or anything. This is just about ready to stop brooming. Brooming's going to be, you know, we'll put the final broom on it and then we'll go back around and do the final edge mark and the final groove mark. And that'll give it that nice picture frame finish look. So we're getting ready to start the first broom. Here we go. Using a really fine broom for this. We clean, after every couple passes with the broom, we clean the paste out of it. It just leaves for a better broom mark that way. We broom over that groove mark and then I use the, the hand groover to put the finished tool mark on it. And we got that plywood in the way so we got to make sure when, when Abby goes to broom up there she's got to lift that handle up because you don't want to stop. Once you stop pulling that broom back you don't want to stop. You want to you want to slowly pull it back all the way until it's, until you're done, or you'll leave a mark. If you stop it and start it halfway in between, it's going to show. We're getting down there towards the end. I use, I'm using like a small 2x4 there to reach out and it's firm, it's pretty firm now, so that 2x4 is not sinking in. So I'm reaching out, making sure that groove looks really nice before we broom over it. And then I'm going to groove right back over it as soon as Abby brooms it right there. And finish that groove right off while I'm right there. You can see I'm reaching way out there. I've got my toes on the form, reaching out up against that wall. 
Abby's right behind me, Broman. We don't want once you mag that surface, you know, it's got it's it's good and moist, and it makes for an, an easy, nice looking broom mark. If you let it if you let it dry up, then you got to mag it out again. So I'm going in. I'm touching up the groove marks right up against the house. And then we're going to put the finish edger mark on this. And then we'll be done. So putting that finish edger mark on really makes the thing look nice and finished. As you can see, I can only reach out there so far from the front. So I had to go out back and finish those grooves. Now the last thing we're going to do is put the edger on it. We use we like those brass edgers. I have those down in the description also. Those are they turn down the edge about a half an inch. They leave it nice and rounded. They leave a really nice smooth looking tool mark. You can see how it gives it that picture frame look. Well, that's it guys. That's how you finish a concrete entry patio. Thanks for watching.